and you're stopping breathing less than five times an hour to be accurate, actually it's about 1.7 times an hour only. Anything below five times an hour is normal. I had noticed I was really tired all the time and it did not matter how much sleep I got, I would still need a nap at the end of the day or when I'd come from work or whatever else. And it just, it became too much. And my friends and when I would stay with them or my family when I would stay with them, they would always complain about how bad my snoring was. The diagnosis is very easy. We can do, you know, depending whether you have a heart disease or a lung disease or any other factors, we can do either a home sleep study or an attended sleep study and we can diagnose that very easily. So I did an at-home appointment first, and then they called me within the next couple of days of my results and said I did have um, obstructive sleep apnea. And then I came in for the CPAP study to see how what my pressures need to be set at. Weight and the next circumference is really a big factor for having sleep apnea. Like women who have a neck size above 16 and men above you know 17, they have increased incidence of sleep apnea. BMI above 30 is a risk factor for sleep apnea. We're seeing it even in kids who have really big tonsils. So I mean the size sometimes of the, or the, 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 the shape of the uh, upper airways, the oral pharynx also play a major factor. I, I did my own research and realized that it can lead to heart problems and all, all these other sorts of things. And not only that, it's just really, really disruptful. And sleep is such a vital part of your life that it's so important to have a good night's sleep. And if you're not getting it, I recommend getting a sleep study just to see what it is, whether it is sleep apnea or insomnia, narcolepsy, or anything like that. Once you have a diagnosis of moderate sleep apnea or more, meaning that you stop breathing more than 15 times an hour, the cardiovascular risk factors of sleep apnea really increases dramatically. And that is mainly cardiac arrhythmia, including atrial fibrillation, and irregular heartbeats that will the patient feel like they are really having palpitations. Sometimes really it becomes very, very dangerous and occasionally lethal. Uh, other than cardiac arrhythmia, really you have, you know, uh, uh, congestive heart failure, left ventricular dysfunction, pulmonary hypertension, and even sometimes, you know, progressive coronary artery disease. As far as you know, the other vascular uh, entity in the body, like many in early strokes, and early dementia because of really uh, uh, overall hypoxemia that happens during the night time. Uh, hypertension is very well linked as a cause, you know, I mean, sleep apnea is a cause for hypertension, increased incidence of diabetes, depression. I mean, there is a lot of, you know, morbidities and sometimes mortalities associated with, you know, obstructive sleep apnea. I got the CPAP and it has completely changed my life. It took a couple nights to get used to sleeping with this mask on your face, but once I got used to it, it felt, I wake up and I'm not tired. I don't nap anymore. I feel refreshed and I feel pretty good.